All right, let's take a look at this problem here. Uh, this problem is asking us to model the equation of a roller coaster. And it gives us a bunch of information about the roller coaster. Uh, we are told that the high and low points are separated by 50 meters horizontally and 30 meters vertically. The low point is three meters below the ground. Um, we're gonna write a function that gives us the distance a point uh, is above the ground uh, at any particular value of x. So for some horizontal value, it'll give us the height above the ground vertically. Um, all right, so let's take a look here at this. Uh, we'll be using the same kind of general set of problems. Um, my strategy is always going to be to try to get uh, several points that I can use, okay? And I'm gonna start out here. Uh, it says that we have a high point of Let's see, the high point, there's a 30 meter distance between the top and the bottom. Notice this thing goes three feet below the ground. So it's actually starting out at a high point. If it's gonna go three feet below the ground, it's high point's actually going to be at seven, uh, at 27, okay? So I'm gonna put a point right there to kind of start this thing out, okay? Um, it reaches its low point three feet below the ground uh, after 50 meters. Okay, so the point 50, negative three is also going to be a point, all right? So basically I have this uh, curve going off in this direction, cutting down through like this. And you have to be real careful when you're working with the period of these functions because notice this one starts us out at a maximum and has us go to a minimum point. And that's not the full cycle, okay? Uh, notice that it's actually maximum to maximum. That's the full cycle. So on the surface, you're thinking the period is going to be 50. The period here is actually going to be 100, okay? And uh, that's, that's going to be very important. So I'm going to fill that in, okay? I am going to use a cosine function here because you can see the maximum value right here starts out at zero. Okay, just like the cosine function. So if I was gonna do a sine function, uh, I'd have to figure out where the function crossed over here and I'd have to do a phase shift. And I don't wanna try to do that. So um, I'm gonna do this as a, as a cosine function, which means we're not gonna have a, have a phase shift. Okay, now the um, amplitude of this function is gonna be half of that distance of 30. Amplitude's gonna end up being 15. Um, the midline here is gonna go halfway between negative 3 and 17, okay? Uh, if you average negative 3 and 17, uh, you end up finding out that the midline, I believe, would be at, um, let's see, negative 3 plus, I'm sorry, uh, it's... Uh, it's negative three and 27, I keep saying 17. Um, anyway, if you divide by two, I think 12 ends up being where that midline passes. Um, and so you've got 15 from negative three up to the 12, and then you've got 15 from the 12 up to the 27. Um, so the midline is, is going to be at 12. And uh, now we can put this whole thing together and we can write our equation. Uh, of course, the one other thing that we're gonna need to do here is we're going to need to write the equation of the period, okay? Remember, we want the period to be 100, and 100 is equal to, 2 pi over b if I'm working in radians, okay? Multiply both sides by b, divide both sides by 100, and uh, we'll end up with pi over 50 being that b value. So we can put all this together. Um, let's see. The height is going to be 15 times the cosine of pi over 50 uh, t and it's going to be shifted up 12, and that should be our final equation there. Uh, again, I'm working uh, using a t variable here, so uh, that's, that's supposed to be h of t there. And uh, that's our final function. So you just have to kind of piece everything together, and I think this works out really well if you just uh, you know, kind of follow all the different parts that you need. It works out very nicely.